the first thing I noticed was how the ball almost acts like a, a bit of a magnet and wherever the ball goes, the opposition go and they begin to follow and track. Um, but when actually watching, you know, the, the, the lad on the ball here where he actually looks to keep hold of the ball to attract the player before either moving the ball on himself or trying to beat the player himself. Mm-hmm. But that, that was probably the big take home for me that, that, that really stood out in this clip. Great. I'll start to play it and it's slowed down now. Mm-hmm. And if you yeah. notice anything, Mark, maybe as it's playing through. Yeah, no, no. For me, for me, really, first of all, at this point here is, I mean, again, we talk about players staying on the ball, but what I really like here now, the player that's just receiving the ball, when we think about movement and positioning, he's obviously thought to himself there, I'm too close. I need to give a little bit of angle and a little bit of support from behind and, and the movement that he's used in terms of tracking backwards to to open up the area of the pitch has, has provided a different picture because now at the moment in this, you know, where that has stopped now, it's very difficult, sorry, yeah, with the two blues in and around the ball for them to break through. But by taking himself back out of the pitch, all of a sudden now he's created space for the ball to be moved out. So if we just keep going a little bit further on, here now as he as he pulls out, it makes the Blues make a decision a little bit more about who and where they're going to go to, which creates then the passing lines for them to actually break through the lines. And then the last bit for me is then as he goes here now, the deception on the pass, he shapes to shoot, twists his body, nice time to pass into the passing and um, obviously a great opportunity for the, for the young man to go in and score. Um, so for me, you know, when we start looking at the observations, what we've got there again is a real connect between um, two or three things that we want to observe in this moment. There you go. Great deception. Mm-hmm. And similar for me, I, I know when I'm watching just the bits of deception around movement as well. So they're around mm-hmm. taking the ball back back that way and whether that's the right decision or not or not. But the player on the mm-hmm. ball in, and there's a bit of movement from the player off the ball in a minute. And I think that... Um, yeah. Rod mentioned deception too, but if you watch a player off the ball now, how they he checks in and and out again, so he goes and then he just goes yep. to create that little bit of footwork in and space, like you said, away from the ball. But I think sometimes as coach we focus a lot on the ball and was just back through uh, free play again. But yeah, I think in here, Abby, as well, it links into that last slide that we spoke about the fact that. Really, the player on the ball has two options. It's either I'm going to pass it to my friend or I'm going to do it myself. So there's, mm-hmm. there's really a 50-50 chance of getting this right, which, again, when mm-hmm. we're talking foundation phase, trying to build confidence and give them the confidence to actually do one thing or the other, like there's so many opportunities here. And the chance of getting it correct yeah. is going to be really high. Yeah. Is anything similar you're noticing in that clip? Yeah, I mean, the similarities that the, the players look really comfortable on the ball. They look happy to draw the player in before releasing it or committing to take the player on. So I think that happens. Obviously, the amount of decisions definitely lifts here because we've got now three outfield teammates plus the goalkeeper as well. Um, and we actually noticed one bit. I think if you if you can play the clip, actually, Abby, mm-hmm. that'd be great. Be slowed down a little bit now so you can break That's it okay. down. And, and it's about, I think, this piece here where the lad actually dribbles in and there's probably an opportunity to play a, a forward pass. Mm-hmm. Um, again, once he's turned this player here, he makes a decision to, again, commit the player and look to take them on. And I, get, I think that's part of that foundation phase is sometimes actually we might see something as a coach and think, oh, I wish I'd done that. But actually what he's done is just as effective and it does end up with a goal scoring opportunity. So sometimes I guess I've, I've definitely been in that situation where you're standing at the side and you're wishing them to do something. And sometimes they see something different and they see the game different and it doesn't make the decision better or worse, but it's their decision and they can learn from that. Yeah, great point, AD. I think as coaches, we're quick, aren't we, to correct players sometimes when actually recognising foundation phase. And I know that um, somebody put it in the in the chat, was it the right decision? You did well to retain the ball. And you're right, he did. And it's around, you know your players better than anyone. Is it the right time to stop it? Is it around them making mistakes? Um, and giving them the opportunity to stay on the ball, master the ball. 
Um, Mark, I know you were going to say something then. Was there anything else to add to? to no, that? I was just, I was just <laughs> going to pick up first on a couple of things to put in the chat box. And, and I think people are right of what they said around actually the Reds team's ability to create space for each other. So we talk about principles of play of, you know, width and depth. That What we've got here is a, is a, is a great opportunity to stretch and challenge the Blues in terms of how and, and where they're going to defend. And, and people are right, you know, and what AD said around one of the key things to me in the foundation phase is it's not actually coaching passing, it's coaching that decision-making around dribbling, when to dribble and when to pass. So here, yeah, it may be there's a great opportunity to make two passes here, but he's been brave and he's been comfortable to stay on it. For me, then it's then what actually what he's done by being a little bit lucky going for the middle. He's committed. Look how many the players are now around him, which has created even more now of a, a great opportunity for for the pass out wide and then obviously finishing with the goal. Um, but if you just then run this on again, I'll go back to now here receiving, knowing where he is, and and again a different part of the foot to actually pass the ball with. So again, one of the things that I think we'll talk about a little bit in a minute is. Do we teach technique here or do we actually allow players just to explore how and when they pass the ball and with what part of the foot? But here now we see with the out with the with the laces pretty much and, and there's been other passes there with, with the side of the foot. As we move into this phase, now we want to start to build connections and more between players because you know, more players on the pitch, there's more opportunities for you to connect with players. So here already we start to see as someone's putting their little triangles. And again, linked to your point, Abby, we start to talk about timing. And if you stop it there, great boy. So that, you know, Kate has put a great infographic there that we, we have a 3v2. But if she plays this pass too early, then it provides the, the black defender an opportunity to recover and then maybe shut a pass in lane for the future. What it also gives then is that timing is given the player that's on the ball that split second to actually then create an angle to go in beyond and Colin mentioned earlier on around penetration and this again is something that we really want to encourage through the capabilities that penetrating passes eventually is what the game is about to, to score a goal at some point you've got to go forward and you've got to get the ball in and around the box to create a goal scoring opportunity for me then the best part about this is if you just play it on a little bit now is the timing of the pass but then this next pass in terms of Sorry, Mark's just a bit slow. It's starting now. It's just yeah. It's I said, okay, bit. so it's the weight of this pass here now that really sets that up. And if we just pause it there, again, the even better if for me now is actually probably um, the, the young girl that's closest to the coach, maybe her scanning and observation skills, she might have just set off a little bit earlier um, because she's recognised the space that ahead of her. And again, we could then, you know, talk about the weight of pass and the and the the, the the sort of the direction that it went. So if we see this again here now, um, good of staying on the ball, being comfortable here now, drawing the player in good weight, little check good. And here now that's just when I think again, the scanning and the movement of the third player run is the one that's actually going to make this, that moment even better than what it was. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, AD? Yeah, I think for me, I I'd, I'd really like the fact that there's always options on the ball. Yeah, and again, really highlighting that that movement and and the positioning yeah. of players, yeah. and that actually at, and, at nearly any given point, you know, there there is an option. Mm. At the one point, yeah. and I think it's early on here where she kind of gets caught up in the the, the top side of this grid, mm. where she doesn't have an option straight away, but actually she uses her body well to protect it, and again, that's a trigger for your teammates. They're, yeah, yeah. they're struggling, yeah. and you saw that the the girl here with pink boots on, she just adjusted their position slightly. The girl actually yeah. turned and, and played out. Yeah. always opportunities to support yeah i think if we look at the graphic just on here as well that we can keep looking at the game within the game and you yeah. think linking back to that foundation phase the first thing we looked at was a 3v3 mm. and actually in that 3v3 we also saw in that exact video of 3v2 so mm. it's just seeing actually you've, yeah. you've taken that format of the game and we can see it in this yeah. yes this is a, a passing training session but yeah i'm sure we'd see that in the game as well and AD, I just stopped it there and, and probably sort of, we've, we've not probably given the young girl that's furthest up the pitch the, the credit mm -hmm. she probably needs because we talk about movement and, and everything. Actually, her movement away 
from or towards the ball is actually open the passing lane for that final ball to go through. So again, she's obviously scanning and, and looking at what's going on. And we link it back to the principles that she's kept the depth, she's kept that defender away from everybody else to create those opportunities, those little three to three V twos and those those passing lanes through. Mm -hmm. And Mark, you took the words out of my mouth um around the the highest player. She's moving all of the time. And not to say that moving all of the time is the right thing. Sometimes it is standing still, but like you said, she stretched it across and she might have been able to receive that ball from her movement, like you said, AD. Yeah. Um, but allowed for that, allowed for that space. So I think as coaches, it's when we're working with players, it's really recognizing players' movements away from the ball so they continue to do it. And then we don't just focus on the on the player with the ball. We talk about a game within a game. And when we talk about the capabilities, um if we if we just play here we go. So here now like we've just seen with the, the younger, the smaller game that we just saw with the young girls is what we've got is exactly the same kind of picture. A little 3v2, a, a game within the game and what the Blues do will really dictate how successful they are. Um, so here you hope now that the players are starting to scan and observe each other. Coming back to the word that was used earlier on, you know, creating a triangle, creating passing lane that makes the defender have to make the decisions. Um, and again, we've, we've highlighted one player of what then we can actually see in terms of his movement and his timing to to actually get it. And the last thing for me here is now that obviously we're seeing a slightly different technique in terms of the the passing that's used. And again, in this case, a, a little bit of luck that it's it's gone through to the defenders. But again, as this this lady, please come in as we come on here now. Again, you know, we talk about penetration. There's there's opportunities within all of these moments here that we can play penetrative passes. Um, and now it's just the observations and the scanning and, and the looking up and around to make decisions that really affects the game here. And I think in that decision, Mark, actually, the lad who's just passed the ball in, you can he recognises, actually, you can see he has he stopped himself. He mm. has to run backwards along the line to make sure he keeps himself on side as well. Yeah. So again, recognising. And again, if you, if you, in fact, could you pause it at that point? Abby, I mean, it's almost just like an end zone game at training, isn't it? That scenario. Mm. It's just a, yeah. a four v four. You're just trying to run the ball over the line and get into yeah. that end zone. But you can't yeah. arrive in the end zone before the ball or you'd be offside. So again, it, yeah. it's just taking these practice principles and how does it apply mm. in the game? Yeah. The bit I was going to just speak about before we move on was um, was this pitch here, but I'm going to show it with a telestrated bit. Is When we play, so we spoke earlier around this being like a 3v2, if you're lucky enough to have lots of space when you when you are training, I tend to see lots of practices and I've been guilty myself of maybe always doing 3v2 in the middle of the pitch or if we're really working and now we're working at YDP and maybe more so in PDP, but if we're working on a 3v2 and when the ball's out wide, can we do our practice where it's out wide? Because now that player is strapped for space on the side of the pitch and the touchline is almost that additional defender so talking around when Mark said earlier around space with the foundation phase, how do we utilise space or pitch geography when we're creating spaces for um, YDP and PDP players, something to consider? And the last one for me before we go on to Mark's um, session plan is around receiving. We've not spoke much around receiving skills. Um, and wherever there's a pass, there's usually a first touch before that. Most of the time, not all of the time. Um, and how, when do we and how do we teach receiving skills um, I know it's a slightly different topic to passing but for, have a look at that when you're looking at those six capabilities when we talk about passing in the in the next phase as well I love this this clip I think it shows elements of a whole different array of ways in which we can progress and penetrate and get through the team um, so again look this first bit was just you know it wasn't a particularly fast pass but it was enough to just try and shift the opposition across the pitch Again, there's opportunities to play forward, and I think she feels potentially we could do it. And again, this links in, and I'm sorry, I forgot your name, who, who mentioned this in the chat, but actually sometimes a backwards pass here, and you see this for the Tottenham players, they all shift up the pitch. And again, it just creates some space in behind them. What we've also got again here is, is one a really simple format, it's just for 2v1. We spoke about making things too easy, but actually that, that's the real spaces that they're working in the Lemna side. That is an easy pass. But what it's done is just shift the players. Um, we see this pass here where we're looking to play into feet. And again, the timing of the movement when the, the centre-back 
travels forward and commits a defender and the eyes are focused on the ball, that's when the midfielder moves in behind. But again, all we're doing is just creating a little 3v2. But the pass takes a couple of players out of the game. We then just saw this fantastic bit of technique here, where again, the defender's not slowed. But what we've managed to do is create that space in behind. And now we've also been able to go over and beyond into the space. So I think there's just lots of different techniques and ways to penetrate, to shift and move opposition, you know, and obviously then it leads to this goal scoring opportunity. And the player, again, just holding her run on the edge of a box, waiting to come and the timing to come and meet that to, to finish. You know, I was looking at the movement and actually sometimes, we said it really early on as well, sometimes mm. you don't have to move to create space. Sometimes by, as you say, just shifting the ball and moving the ball into a different area like here now. And if you look at the 26, she's not really having to move at this point to commit defenders. Now the timing of that has actually opened up the space and you say a nice bit of technique there to move. And again, we can't actually see the winger here. But again, one of the things that we'd probably want to look at is has she got outside the eye line of the defender? So can the defender actually see her as she starts to make a run? Has she waited until the the player has started to commit forwards to then drive in behind? Um, and again, these are the connections between players that we, we really want to see. Now, again, here, there's a great opportunity possibly for her to drive into the space. Um, and we'd love to know what her decision-making was to go back there, but it then has created a, a, a higher a higher moment for them to then pull the defence up high, which is create the space. And again, that links back to the game plan, doesn't it? Is that we know if we push them high enough, they will leave space in behind. So again, finding opportunities in practice to replicate those moments in the game as you progress up the age groups and being really position specific is crucial in terms of developing the range of passing. I think somebody mentioned there's it's easy to play forward when there's lots of space, but space is created by three players operating or four players can't see them all operating on the back line, all back playing like high and wide, so it creates that space. But also when we looked at the, so if we compare right down at the foundation phase around smaller, smaller and AD, back to your point around decision-making, mm -hmm. the smaller practices, the player was driving right into this player here to commit, to pop off, but they know that actually they, they travel in too far, that opportunity to play and break that line is going to go. So the timing of the pass the timing of the movement being more key, the higher up and the more players you get on the uh, on the pitch, and more decisions are being made. So look at those six capabilities. You can almost shine a light on lots of different players in this. And the 46, before the ball's even near her feet, she's already checked her shoulder and looked around and thought, I'll bounce back and let's go back in and play around. And the opposition have the ball and it's that, that transition, what we do on transition. And I guess a bit of a rhetorical question to everybody mm -hmm. on this evening how often do you start your practices with the team you're not working with in possession um, compared to the amount of times you start the ball with your team in possession? So here we're looking at potentially passing, breaking lines, playing through, whatever you want to title your session. But actually, it starts with the opposition. Hmm. I think if we play here, actually, what the opposition, they do well at the moment. Here, essentially, look, we, we put that as a 3v4. That could be a 2v2. It could be a 2v1. It depends on how you look at it. But actually keeping the ball was good. That's the moment where the detail on the pass, it, it just lacked somewhat. Um, and there was a lack of communication where the, the teammate wants the ball in behind and makes the movement there, but the player on the ball plays the ball that they want to play instead of the ball that their opponent wants to make. And I think that's the bit that's then led down, you know, to the opposition getting the ball and really looking to take advantage of a team that's now defensively disorganised. Um, mm -hmm. They're very precise and quick with it. And they played off limited touches. I didn't give, I believe it's Leicester in this clip, I didn't give them a chance to get back and and to make amends, you know, and to get themselves defensively organised. I think somewhere I saw a comment, I believe it was Colin, he spoke about the teams that sometimes they keep possession for possession's sake. But actually, sometimes we do that to move the opposition, but there might be a moment in transition like here where we see the other team are out of shape and actually how do we penetrate quickly, precisely and with real... Um, I guess a bit of a killer instinct at the end of it.